I'd be willing to bet that most of you listening know at least a little bit about Michael Moronis and Adam Smith. Over a year ago, Michael Moronis, who was 11 at the time, tried to hang himself as a result of bullying at school. This was mostly centered on him being a brony. And more recently, a 19-year-old Adam Smith threw himself under a moving train as the result of online bullying from within the brony community. It should go without saying that this is a problem, but the reason that it doesn't go without saying is because the problem isn't getting treated. Now, there's always plenty of support for after the fact, and there are dozens if not hundreds of groups that try and often fail to treat the symptoms while the root of the problem goes unchecked. Suicide, and the attempts thereof, continues to rise in the statistics. Bullying that often seems to be the cause of these suicides continues unabated or even gets worse. I believe that actions speak louder than words. And although I don't believe that many people consciously wish these fates on others, the actions of everyone involved cause me to ask these questions. To those who antagonize their peers into this state of mind. To those who make attempts on their own lives. To those who don't address the root of the problem. And to those who only seek to help when it's too late. Why must we act this way towards others? Why do we not seek to better ourselves? And why do we care more for a dead man than one who's still living? Although there are patterns, very few cases are identical to each other and none of them that involve otherwise mentally healthy victims can be pinned down to any one cause. I have observed that suicide happens when there is relentless abuses in school, work, family, or relationships, then the victim does not seek help and or the others don't provide adequate help should they come to help at all. In the case of Michael Moronis, this is absolutely unacceptable. Now, I've known a lot of kids to be resilient enough to see themselves through this kind of treatment. And this is not to say that they should, but I'll get to that later. The point right now is that this was likely going on unchecked for an extended period of time in order for it to get this bad. Michael didn't open up about how bad the bullying was until the night before he tried to hang himself. Even if his parents weren't around him enough to see what he was going through, I would find it difficult to believe that his teachers and friends at school, those who see him more often, didn't see what he was going through. So why weren't Michael's parents notified immediately when he surveyed his classmates about whether or not they would still like him if he expressed his fandom? How many attempts did Michael's friends make to stand up for him? How many attempts were made to help Michael stand up for himself? We may never know the full answers to these questions. It's hard to ask these questions with pure intentions and without blaming the victims, which helps nothing. Many people who were in a position to offer the best insight are no longer with us. Most people surrounding the situation will avoid guilting themselves by claiming to have no knowledge or that they did everything that they could do, regardless of whether or not that's true. But the fact that Michael and upwards of 10,000 other kids his age in the year of 2013 alone were considering or attempting suicide tells me that there is a grievous lack of action on everyone's part. An 11-year-old should not even know about suicide, much less consider it an option. And I believe that there is little hope for true prevention if we don't all know the answers to these questions and understand the part that we all play in saving lives. Now this brings me to the next group of people involved, the antagonists. I've heard many theories on the conscious or subconscious motivations of bullying. There's the malicious sense of humor which might be combined with a lack of empathy towards their victims, or perhaps it's an odd way of expressing affection, which is something I never quite understood. Maybe they're just trying to bring down others to make themselves feel superior or look superior in the eyes of their peers. Maybe it's venting stress or trauma or abuse that had been internalized from another source. Or it could just be that someone's being vocal about something that they think is abnormal. I would like everyone listening to take an introspective moment. Have you ever been an antagonist? If so, what was your motivation? What did you accomplish? What sort of damage did you do? And did you ever stop, or are you still doing it? I ask these questions to both reinforce the point, as well as expand on my own knowledge on the subject. I only hope that I can get some honest answers if, in fact, anyone who's listening is or was a bully of some kind. But I must tread lightly here lest I make a hypocrite of myself. Most people who have hung out with me know that I have brutally honest tendencies, and I will admit to this. I believe they're necessary to help people better themselves, and I'm even harder on myself than I am on other people. 
However, there are big differences between this and being a bully. These being mainly the context, intensity, and actions. Simply put, when I'm giving advice on something, I only speak from experience. I speak with compassion, I speak only to the issue at hand, and I only speak to the issue at hand when it comes up. Although it may still hurt the person that I'm addressing, that pain heals quickly and leaves strength in its wake. Bullying, on the other hand, is merciless, relentless, and personal. With the rare exception of misguided critiquing efforts, it is done with the objectives of tearing someone down and causing pain. And again, if this is you, please answer me honestly. Why? This happens everywhere, especially online and even in the brony community. Now, this concept baffles me even further than anything that I've already stated. I'd say that it's safe to say that most people who started watching Friendship is Magic stayed with it for its characters and message. Many bronies attest that this is something they wish existed more in the real world, and some claim to try to emulate these lessons. Now this begs these questions. How many of those bronies used to exhibit this type of behavior, and how many still do? There is also the case of Adam Smith, the 19-year-old who recently threw himself under a moving train after taking this type of online abuse. Supposedly, he had been accused of plagiarizing film fictions. I can't confirm or deny this as I wasn't able to find any of his stories, his Tumblr, blog, or his videos. But if there is anyone listening who can offer further insight to this situation, then I would be very open to it. The article states that he had been banned from his site for these actions. He would also make videos despite a long-term memory issue and a speech impediment. A couple of comments from his videos that were listed in the article demonstrates points I had mentioned earlier about insulting someone for their flaws. Although they seem relatively mild in my eyes, they probably had more of an effect on Adam himself, and the article makes references to quote-unquote even more vile comments that are so typical to online forums. This is not how a brony should act towards someone else, and I honestly hope that I never meet someone who makes comments like this because I really don't know how I would react. These hate-filled comments that people post may seem harmless and anonymous to the poster, but in truth, there's no way to know just how much harm they cause until it's too late. It's vital that we understand our actions, why we take them, and the effect that they have on others. These things are taken to heart, and they cause a lot of damage. Not always just because that the victim is too sensitive, but because your vicious approach was uncalled for and legitimately harmful. I've spent a while now addressing those who ignore the problem, as well as those who cause the problem. But now we have to address the victims. I have no intention of blaming those subjugated to bullying for the way that they've been treated. But I do assure you all that there is always a solution, and that you share responsibility for your actions as well. I don't recommend relying on anti-bullying programs to help you as they're only marginally effective under the best circumstances which I believe are starting young and focusing on teamwork based activities. The message can easily be ignored, especially if it's just someone lecturing on the importance of tolerance and or addressing middle to high school age students. Anti-bullying committees are usually groups of well-meaning people who don't understand the root of the problem. They seek to prevent bullying by preaching tolerance, which, as previously stated, is easily ignored. Simply put, this message won't get to anyone who doesn't already practice it. And to anyone who already practices it, the seminars that they're probably being forced to sit through will simply be boring, and other activities or events will only attract like-minded individuals. At this point, we're only preaching to the choir. The only truly effective way to curtail bullying is to empower the victim and help them remove whatever satisfaction a bully could get in conjunction with creating real consequences for malicious behavior. However, in most schools, the victim is punished or otherwise discouraged in standing up for themselves. I don't consider suspension a viable consequence for bullying, and this is all considering that the problem doesn't get swept under the rug in the first place for one reason or another. So if you find yourself being bullied and ignoring the problem hasn't worked, then you need to stand up for yourself. Remember that while we are not to blame for the abuse that we take from others, this does not mean that we are without fault. Sometimes, if we are being harassed for our flaws, it would actually do us a little bit of good to look inwards. In my case, when I was younger and being bullied, I took this as a cue to work on my general social awkwardness and learn how to choose the people that I surround myself with as well as how I interact with them. There's a lot we can prevent if we simply work hard at bettering ourselves. It can also help greatly to avoid situations where you might get bullied. 
I implore everyone to look within themselves before they do anything. Know exactly what your limits are, and expect them to be pushed with backlash each time you put yourself in the public eye. For example, if I was Adam Smith, I would not have started making videos because I would have known that I would get hateful comments about my speech impediment or stories which may or may not have actually been mine. I know that I'm not ready to handle that and I would avoid the situation. But if I must make videos, I would first work hard to overcome these handicaps and produce my content once I was ready to view these hateful comments as potential suggestions for further self-improvement. Furthermore, in the case of Adam Smith, it would have been even easier to avoid the bullies. While online bullying is especially venomous, it is also the easiest to avoid. Simply block users who are harassing you, or simply sign off for a while. There is nothing that you can do on the internet that will ever truly match the fun that awaits you in the real world, nor will anything online match the social and mental therapy that's obtained through friendship. There are a million things to do out there. All you have to do is look in the right places. In some cases, it proves very effective in helping people overcome their handicaps. But we can't always control our handicaps, can we? We also cannot control the gender that we're born with, the color of our skin, or any other things that we might get bullied for. It's times like this that we have to surround ourselves with positivity. Reach out for support. Open up to those around you. There is someone out there who truly loves you and won't think differently of you for reaching out. And even if there isn't, figure out that type of person that you want to be around and seek them out. They're out there somewhere, I promise. You should also never think that you're weak for reaching out. Adam Smith killed himself because he felt that he could not be himself. I believe that it's not at all that he couldn't be himself. I believe that he needed to see the potential that he had as a person and work to better himself instead of investing his whole being into a venomous virtual community. Suicide is not an option. Whatever situation you're in, if you work hard, choose patience, and stand up for yourself, then there is always a real solution. And one that doesn't involve your life ending before you've made it happy for yourself, or making your loved ones suffer because you chose not to tackle your challenges. Likewise, we cannot be complacent in helping others. Remember that we must empower those who are being victimized. So if you see someone being harassed, stand up for them, or help them stand up for themselves. Don't ever assume that someone can handle it on their own. They shouldn't have to. This is the mistake that Mrs. Moronis herself admits to and regrets the most. Reach out to those who are hurting from being bullied. Help them find their solution, and be an active part in that solution in the most direct, personal, hands-on way possible. Keep your eyes open for the signs. A lot of these are obvious if you're not complacent towards the needs of your friends. These are expressing feelings of hopelessness, feeling as if they're a burden, or have been humiliated. Or if they experience large amounts of anxiety, insomnia, loss of interest, or seem constantly agitated. When you see these patterns in your loved ones, it is time to take action. Each of you listening has a tremendous amount of power to help yourselves as well as those around you. You just need to choose to use it. Many of us listening only start using this power once it's too late, showing that we, as a society, care more for a dead man than a living one, when in reality, we should care about everyone equally. Some of us use this power to take advantage of others or tear them down to make ourselves feel superior. This is absolutely unacceptable, especially in the brony fandom, which is supposed to be based around the power of friendship. But, it does happen nonetheless. So if you are guilty of this, then I implore you to do some serious self-reflection and change to the right path before it's too late. Hopefully, we can eliminate this within our own community so we won't lose any more Adam Smiths. And then once this is done, we'll have a much better chance of spreading it to the rest of the world so we do not lose any more of Michael Moronis. And, as always, let me know if you think that I am wrong or have missed anything so that we may discuss it further. If you have any thoughts on this video, or would like to hear something discussed, you can leave a comment below, or drop comments, questions, topic suggestions, and review suggestions by following Brawny Buck on Tumblr, or sending an email to brawnydebates at yahoo.com. Also, feel free to check out my Patreon page to see how you can support my channel and what you'll get in return. Big thanks to all of those supporting me already. Have a great day, and I look forward to hearing from all of you soon.